Now, speaking of Spider-Man 3, we might as well hop on that train. Doctor Strange is going to be in Spider-Man 3. I was trying to give you a swag way, but you just kind of casually just took it over to Spider-Man 3. That's because I'm more confused at what the game plan is. You know, I, honestly, I, I don't like... Here's the thing. Now, I'm starting to get a little upset by it. Right. And this is what I mean by that. Because... Was it cool to have Tony Stark in the first Spider-Man because it's the MCU Spider-Man? Mm-hmm. Cool. I'm cool with that, right? Because he's starting out, and it's like, okay, he gets he gets his father figure to help him out because there's no Uncle Ben, blah, 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 blah. Right. I'm not mad at Tony Stark. In it. He had enough time. But then when we get to Far From Home, mm-hmm. he still needed some kind of assistance, but then it took him, his Peter Parker sense, to figure out what was going on with, with Mysterio, correct? Right. I don't know why Doctor Strange has to be in this third movie. The only thing I can think of is they're doing that multiverse thing. That's the only thing I can think of. And well, this, if they do... This could also be a setup movie for uh, Multiverse of Madness. Uh, but, but, but I don't want Spider-Man to be the to be that setup, right? Let yeah. Wanda Vision be that setup, especially especially if this is quote unquote the last Spider-Man movie in the MCU. Yeah, and I didn't say you're trying to do it because you never know. There's rumors that they probably want to call back Tobey Maguire mm-hmm. and Andrew Garfield, right? And hell, even Miles Morales. But right. I'm just saying. But uh, with that being said, it's like they kind of already did a Spider Verse movie. Yeah, and then they're going to do another Spider Verse movie. Into the Spider Verse two, so I don't need this Spider Man three to be a Spider Verse action. Movie. Yeah. Now I remember yeah. they had an interview with uh, the head of um, Sony's Marvel. Yeah. And she said, "Yes, we do plan to do a live action Spider Verse movie." And of course, the back of my head. Now, when the first Spider Verse was announced, I was a little nervous because I'm like, Miles isn't fleshed out as a character yet. Yeah, and you need to flesh him out as a character before you throw in the Spider Verse. Mm-hmm. However, they pulled it off extremely well. I ate my words, and I I think it's the best Spider Man movie that we have. However, yes. with this, I feel like now this is feeling forced. Now you now I feel like this is pandering. Yeah, it was uh, more like uh, see, it bit. did work. Okay, let's do it again. And it did. It I I I just don't necessarily agree with that that move. Right, right. And then you also had the conflicting universes with uh, Spider-Man. You know, with the Venomverse now that's going on. We don't know what's happening with, uh, uh, gosh, what's the vampire name? Morbius? Yeah. We don't know what's going on. Because we see Michael Keaton, but we see a Tobey Maguire Spider-Man in the background. So it's... Sony is playing a game that where we're all lost on. Look, we're all lost on, and I, I have to have confidence that in the end it'll turn out to be great. But this right. is this is the scary thing about it being great. Mm-hmm. But with things that come to, when, when you when things are great comes being spoiled, right? And then what I mean by spoiled, I mean like spoiler alert. I mean like you're spoiled to the point that now the the, the problem that Marvel's going to run into is that there's no heroes that can stand on their own anymore, right? Everybody got to be with this team, with this, with this, with this. I'm like, no, because that takes away from, like, kind of like how DC's doing it now. Like, we're doing all these standalone movies so these characters can stand on their own. Then they continue for a little Justice League movie, but then they got to stand on their own. Right. And it makes it feel like, it makes me feel like there's no threat that the, that one hero can't handle. Exactly. It's like the Avengers have to team up for a reason. Not one, exactly. not one villain could beat. You know, not one hero can beat Thanos. Exactly. So it's and now it's like now, now we always have to jump someone. Is that how we're gonna go with everything? So it's uh-huh. it's definitely it's weird. Um, now, do you feel like he's gonna have a role like he did in Thor Ragnarok, where he played a very small role? I I think he's is probably gonna be. The role of this multiverse. Okay. Yeah, that's th- that's what I truly think it's going to be. Now, this movie is supposed to come out before or after um, the multiverse movie. I 
I'm I don't not know. sure if it's before or after the second Doctor Strange. Actually, I think I, I think I don't know when when is the the that one scheduled to come out. That Spider Man three. I have no idea. I think the date is still TBD. TBD. Oh, okay. Because of everything going on right now. Yeah, so, no, I, I, I yeah, I, I don't know. It. And then and then we also got the news of Electro being in the movie, being played by Jamie Fox, and it's like, Lovely. is this like which Electro is this? <laughs> so it, it's it, it's confusing. It is. I mean, I I think they'll build something good, but right as of right now. You know, the process of it, to try to figure it all out, it is kind of, it's confusing. Right, right. Now, I personally still, my pitch for the third Spider-Man film, I feel like it would be a chance to introduce characters, but also keep it a Spider-Man film, where we have uh-huh. him, uh, we have the Punisher going after him, after, quote unquote, you know, uh, Rey Mysterio saying, yeah, he killed all these people. And then, Wait, Ray Mysterio or Mysterio? I'm sorry, Mysterio. I, yes. <laughs> thank you for catching that. Um, for having Mysterio saying, yeah, he killed all these people. So you also have homage to the comic books for when the Punisher first appeared in uh, the Spider-Man issue, where he's going after Spider-Man because he felt like he did something wrong. That would be a great way to bring uh, John Berthall in for his Punisher. And then if you uh-huh. have like, you could have like a court scene where you could bring in she-Hawk and um, Matt Murdock. Yeah. So it's like you could add a combination of all these characters with still making it a Spider-Man film to the core. But now we're adding a multi-powerful hero. A multi-dimensional hero to mm-hmm. the scene to a more grounded superhero. It kind of takes away. It feels, like it's, it feels like I'm going to watch Endgame again. And I don't want that in the Spider-Man film. That's what's happening with a lot of the Marvel heroes. They keep the team up thing. So then now you gonna have the fans asking, "Well, is this big of a threat? Why don't they just call?" And you, you don't want it to happen, but that's right. what does happen. Right now, I did have that issue previously with uh, the Marvel films. Like I feel like you know, Captain America should be a part of Iron Man three because he's fighting a terrorist that's threatening America. So I'm like, well, why was Cap not around at this time? So it. I mean, you do have those questions, whereas, um, like, none of these are feeling grounded. Whereas Spider-Man Far, uh, no, sorry, Spider-Man Homecoming felt grounded. Whereas, like, uh-huh. okay, this happened in, like, a neighborhood, and it's not a worldwide catastrophe. So, mm-hmm. yeah. um, how did you feel about, um, uh, any last information about, like, any last feelings about this? I know it's going to be good. But, but however, it still disappoints me that Spider Man can't like stay on his own. Yeah, that's I think that's what what bothers me the most. Right. 